If you have fatigue, anemia, digestive issues, tingling in your hands, if you have problems in your mouth and in your tongue, if you have problems with memory, do you think that this could be related or do you think that these are all separated? Well, I want to tell you that all these things could be completely related to a deficiency in one vitamin, just one, and it's vitamin B12. Vitamin B12, it's very necessary in our body in, and it has a lot of functions that I'm going to talk to you about in a minute. And I'm going to talk to you why people can be deficient and why so many people right now are deficient in vitamin B12. I'm going to tell you what can you do in order to not have a deficiency in vitamin B12. What's the best way to get diagnosed on vitamin B12? What are the early signs of vitamin B12 deficiency? And how can you repair that either with food or either with supplements and which are the best way of supplements with the right dose in which you can start controlling the deficiency of vitamin B12. Let's go for the functions of vitamin B12 in your body. Why it's so important? Well, it is involved in the production of red blood cells. And for the production of red blood cells, there's something that we need to take into account before everything else. Vitamin B12, in order to get absorbed in our body, we need to have good amount of hydrochloric acid in your stomach. Remember that your stomach needs to be acidic. This is the natural way is the natural physiology of your stomach. If you have doubts on the normal physiology and how to control gastritis and the normal amount of acid in your body, you can go and watch this video that we made some months before that a lot of people have seen it and we have helped a lot of patients recovering the normal function. Then when we have a good stomach, good acid, then it produces something called intrinsic factor. An intrinsic factor inside the stomach is necessary for the assimilation, for the absorption of vitamin B12. So vitamin B12 can have the function that I'm going to talk to you about. So the first one is the production of red blood cells. That's why when you are lacking of vitamin B12, you're going to have a deficiency or a type of anemia called megaloblastic anemia in which we see red blood cells that are immature and we see large red blood cells in the bloodstream that's why it is called megaloblastic anemia but it's just a type of anemia that it's very specific for the deficiency of vitamin b12 second of all vitamin b12 is necessary for the stability of neurons on the central nervous system or and the peripheral neurons in our body so when we have low levels, that, that's why it might give us a lot of neurological symptoms that I'm going to talk to you about in a minute. Number three, it's necessary for the function or the conversion of energy of healthy fats. Well, there is a process called methylation in our body. And for the process of methylation, in order, when we have a, the process that you can see in this image, that up, it's all, there's an amino acid called methionine. Methionine has to convert to homocysteine and homocysteine can go down and be excreted or continue the path or it could be recycled again to methionine. Function number four, it's very necessary for the synthesis of DNA and we need a good synthesis and a good repair of DNA because all the time we are renewing all of our cells. Sometimes DNA makes like a little shortcut. When it has a shortcut, it needs to be repaired well. Vitamin B12 and also folate that I just mentioned before in that same process called methylation. That's one of the processes inside the cells, inside the nucleus and inside the DNA that helps us get a good repair and a good synthesis of DNA. B12, it's very, very necessary for this process. And vitamin B12 can be also very, very useful for cognitive and for brain function, not just the neurons coming out, but for the function by itself. That's why some people when they're deficient, they get, the, they get this brain fog or they have problems with memory or memory loss. And this could be very, very related with the deficiency of vitamin B12. Now let's remember who are the people that are in risk of getting a deficiency of vitamin B12. Vitamin B12, what I mentioned about the intrinsic factor is produced in the lower part of the stomach, in the body of the stomach and in the fundus of the stomach. That's where you produce mostly all of the acid in your stomach. When you have problems there because you have a bariatric surgery or when you have any other intervention that affects that, then you're going to have problems assimilating the amount 
of vitamin B12 that you're ingesting. So the people that are more at risk are people consuming large amounts of anti-acids like omeprazole, pentoprazole, and soprazole, or ranitinin, or any other anti-acid for a large amount of time. People that have bariatric surgery, people that have burns in their stomach. And the second reason why people get deficient of vitamin B12 is when they start having a vegan or a vegetarian diet that doesn't include eggs. When they have only dairy or no animal derivates at all, then people are not going to be able to ingest good amounts of vitamin B12. But please remember this. If you decide going vegan today, you don't need to start taking B12 today. You can start having vitamin B12 when you measure your levels and measure are starting to go down. How much time could that take? In between one to five years. Go and measure it because now that we just said which are the, the groups or which are the people that are more at risk, now we can talk which is the best way to measure it. And the best way is just to get a blood test. Go ask your physician. Now let's go and see how am I going to feel that I might have a deficiency in vitamin B12. And one thing I want you to remember is that just by having one of these symptoms, it doesn't mean that you have a deficiency. So the first one is being fatigued. Second of all, I just mentioned it before, is by having anemia. But when your physician checks and you have this specific type of anemia that's called megaloblastic anemia. Number three is when you have something called paresthesia or when you have an alter the sensibility in your skin or in your extremities such as numbling or tingling in your extremities. This is something this is probably the most widely symptom seen in patients. Number five is when you have problems in your mouth. Which are the foods that you can include in your diet to make to have good levels of vitamin B12? Well, it's very easy. Go for animal meats, animal organs, animal muscle. When you eat animals, when you eat beef, pork, chicken, turkey, fish, whatever, every single animal when we eat animals have all the amounts of vitamin B12 that we really need. Or when you go for eggs, you might also end up seeing them in enriched foods. But this is something done in a lab, in an artificial way. It could be done. But if you don't want to be ingesting animal foods or eggs at all, then you have to go for a supplement. So again, get your levels measured. If you're seeing, don't wait to have a deficiency. Because it's different to have a deficiency to be insufficient. And people start having symptoms when they are insufficient. What does it mean to be insufficient? To be close to the number of being deficient, but not being deficient by itself. Classically, we have always said when you're efficient and deficient. But we, we never talk about, about being insufficient. So when you see that your levels are starting to decline, that's the moment where you should start taking a supplement. What is the right dose in between maybe 2 to 2.8 micrograms per day? You could take it daily or you can take the summary of all that, taking it once per week. So again, these are the things that we have just reviewed in which why vitamin B12 is so important, who is in risk, how to get it uh, measured, which are the foods that are rich in vitamin B12, which are the symptoms in which you can see and when you have maybe a mixture of all those symptoms that seem to be like all apart, they might be all part of one same thing. And what can you do? Starting to have good levels of vitamin B12 and you can have a good health because really vitamin B12, it's very important, very necessary for your health. So before we leave, please guys, remember to help us grow this community. In our English, in our Spanish channel, we have over 2.5 million followers and we are building this community because we have one purpose. And you want to know what that is? I want to make people know that they can be the owners of their health. And you can only do that when you have strategies, when you have information, when you have tools, and when someone helps you know how to use them. I want you to be conscious on how to be the owner of your health. So this is the very, very, very deep purpose of this channel and of all the things that I have done in health. So. Again, the best way to support us, it's very easy. Share the video, hit the like button. Please remember here to subscribe and hit the bell. So every time, every time that we make a new video, you're going to be the first one to be notified and we'll see you next time. Thank you.